Operation Eicher, or Oak, the dramatic 1943 rescue of deposed Italian dictator Benito Mussolini from a mountaintop hotel by German paratroopers and SS commandos is one of the most famous raids of World War II. He caused SS officer Otto Skotseni, the tall, scar-faced Austrian, to rise to prominence and fame, and its success enabled Hitler to set Mussolini up as leader of the new Italian Social Republic, a Nazi puppet state in northern Italy. But what most people don't know is that there was a second secret operation run at the same time as the Germans snatched Mussolini from atop the Gran Sasso, a smaller raid led by one of Skotseni's young SS subordinates and a handful of heavily armed men to rescue Mussolini's wife and two young children held in a castle and get them to safety in Germany. Mussolini had married Rachele Guidi in 1915. She bore him five children, and by 1943, only the two youngest, Romano, born in 1927, and Anna Maria, born in 1929, were still living at home with their mother. Benito Mussolini fell from power in 1943, after ruling Italy as Prime Minister since 1922, when he had dramatically seized power. Italy's disastrous campaign in North Africa and East Africa had ended in military humiliation, and his failure to conquer Greece without German assistance made Mussolini a laughingstock, mockingly called the sawdust Caesar by the American press. The Allied landings in Sicily in July 1943 were the last straw for many members of the fascist Grand Council in Rome, and on the 24th of July there was a vote of no confidence in Mussolini, the Duce losing by 19 votes to 8. King Victor Emmanuel sacked Mussolini as Prime Minister and had him placed under arrest. The new Italian government, led by Marshal Pietro Badoglio, entered secret negotiations with the Allies to leave the Axis Union with Germany and join the Allies instead. In the meantime, Hitler ordered that Mussolini be found and rescued, but the Italians moved the Duce around, making it difficult for German intelligence to locate him. On the 3rd of September 1943, Italy changed sides, and the Germans moved to occupy as much of Italy as they could, including Rome, disarming and imprisoning Italian forces. The King and Badoglio fled to the Allies in southern Italy, while Mussolini was held in a hotel atop the Gran Sasso in the Abruzzo region outside Rome. SS intelligence eventually pinpointed Mussolini's location, and the Luftwaffe was drafted in to formulate a dramatic rescue plan to land paratroopers by glider atop the mountain, simultaneously capturing the cable car station at the base of the mountain and moving Mussolini out to safety in Germany. Mussolini was held without his family. His wife and two youngest children were at the Rocca delle Camanate, a medieval castle seven miles from Mussolini's birthplace at Predapio in the Emilia-Romagna region. The castle had been purchased by Mussolini as his summer residence, and was taken over by troops loyal to Badoglio after Mussolini's arrest. Rachele and her son and daughter and a small domestic staff were held at the castle under Carabinieri guard. As Luftwaffe General Kurt Student oversaw planning for Mussolini's rescue from the Gran Sasso, it was decided to also rescue Mussolini's wife and children at the same time and evacuate them to Germany. The Rome Gestapo chief, SS Obersturmbannführer Herbert Kappler, had agents all over Italy trying to find out information about Mussolini's detention useful to planning the rescue mission, and his agents located Rachele Mussolini at Rocca della Camanate, hoping to obtain information from her as well. Envisioning a side operation separate from the Luftwaffe glider raid to free Mussolini, Student asked SS Hauptsturmführer Otto Skotseni, who led Germany's commando force, to snatch Rachele Mussolini and her children, while simultaneously paratrooper Major Harold Moores led the operation to free Mussolini from the Grand Sasso. Unfortunately for Student and Moors, Scorsini was able to push himself into the Gran Sasso mission as well, with himself and 16 SS and SD men to join the Luftwaffe glider assault. 
Skodzeni was assigned the task of providing Mussolini with personal protection and an SS escort off the mountain. And bringing along a camera team, Skodzeni ensured that he would be given the credit for Mussolini's rescue and not Moors and the Luftwaffe. Regarding Rachele Mussolini, Skodzeni assigned one of his SS subordinate officers the task of rescuing the Duce's family. Untersturmführer Hans Mendel was given a truck and six men for the task, all that could be spared. The castle was guarded by Italian carabinieri, who were numerous and well armed, but the SS would go in full battle order with automatic weapons. Mendel was to rely on surprise and aggression if necessary, but if the police decided to fight, Mendel would be badly outnumbered and vulnerable. The raid on the castle was timed to occur at about 2 p.m. on the 12th of September 1943 to ensure that the operation happened at roughly the same time as the glider assault on the Grand Sasso, to prevent Italians from having early warning of a German operation to snatch the Duce. The Grand Sasso raid commenced at 1.05 p.m when 10 DFS-230 gliders began to be towed aloft by Henschel HS-126 planes from an airbase near Rome. Leading the airborne part of the raid was Oberleutnant Georg Baron von Berlepsch, Skorzeny accompanying him. The ground operation, led by Major Moores, successfully captured the cable car station at the foot of the mountain about 2 p.m., and about five minutes later the gliders started landing close to the hotel. The 200 carabinieri guarding Mussolini surrendered, and Scorsini and his SS commandos stormed the hotel, locating the Duce. SS Untersturmführer Mendel launched his raid at 2 p.m., just as Major Moores was securing the station at the foot of the Grand Sasso. He drove in a single truck straight up to the sentry post in front of the castle, dismounted, and automatic weapons brandished menacingly, forced his way with his men into the main entrance. The carabinieri officer commanding took one look at the SS and decided that they could have Rachele Mussolini and her children. Mendel told Rachele that she had 15 minutes to pack some bags before they would be leaving. At 2.15 p.m., Rachele and her children were escorted to a commandeered Fiat car, Mendel detaching one of his men as driver, while the rest piled back into the truck and escorted the car to a German airfield near Forley, a 30-minute drive. At 2.45 p.m., Major Moors and some Germans came up the cable car and met Mussolini at the top of the mountain. It was decided that Mussolini would be flown out as the roads were in turmoil with partisan attacks and roving Italian army units. A Fiesler Fi-156 Storch light aircraft with the pilot, Mussolini and Scorzani aboard managed to fly off the mountain while the paratroopers and the remaining SS commandos evacuated by road. Mussolini demanded to go to his wife at the castle, but Scorzani informed him that everything was in hand, and so Mussolini flew from Rome in a Heinkel HE-111 to Vienna. The following day he flew to Munich in a Junkers 52, and thence on to Hitler's Eastern Front headquarters, the Wolf's Lair, for a warm welcome from the Führer. Rachele Mussolini and her children were loaded aboard a Luftwaffe Junkers 52 transport aircraft at Forley and flown to Munich, where the SS had commandeered a large villa for their use. Both operations were outstanding successes and of enormous propaganda value to the Germans. Rachele Mussolini survived her husband's second downfall in 1945 when he was captured by Italian partisans along with his mistress, Clara Petacci, trying to reach safety in Germany. Mussolini and Petacci were shot and their bodies publicly displayed in Milan. Rachele Mussolini was also captured by partisans attempting to flee to Switzerland. She and her youngest children were turned over to the US Army, but released after several months of imprisonment. After the war, she ran a restaurant in Predapio and died in 1979 at the age of 89. Her son Romano was a famous jazz pianist, painter and film producer who died in 2006, age 78, while his younger sister Anna Maria became a radio host. She died in 1968, age 38, 
and was buried beside her father in the Mussolini family crypt. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.